Hey everybody, Jared Jones, and we got a housing outlook on across multiple levels. We are seeing builder sales falling. Bad news for home builders, they are losing buyers at record levels never before seen in history of tracking this data. Quick move homes, homes that the builders are finishing are piling up in a very long list. And December data proves that the housing market is in a bigger struggle than ever as we pull away from last year's june numbers the market continues to slip in every single way the amount of properties that are sitting and piling up on the market the amount of price reductions piling up the amount of price loss that the average american is losing in their home is growing and the data could not be more clear that sellers and buyers are going to have to be extraordinarily careful in the year ahead Let's take a look at the most recent data. And the first thing I want to start with is the most recent earnings report. KB Homes, one of the nation's largest builders, came out and gave their report that astound nearly 70% of their properties in the last quarter were canceled. Buyers that were under contract still falling out at a staggering pace. This is much higher, folks, than even what we saw in 2008 when we saw the bubble burst the last time. Also, quick move inventory is up 200% year over year. Okay, that means that there is um, a 200% increase in the amount of properties builders have finished off. They have, you know, 90 days left, 60 days left. You know, each builder probably qualifies what a quick move is with a, a different period of time. But that means builders are building houses that they need buyers for, that they're facing loan payments on, that they need to move out the door. Um, this number, by the way, 200% year over year quick move inventory being up is 50% higher than pre pandemic levels. Okay. And that's, there's more quick move inventory coming in 2023 because even though builders have cut back heavily on their starts, there's still 785,000 single family homes actively under construction. That is incredible, folks. Here's the deal, and I'm seeing it in Florida as well. Properties that used to be selling for 340, 350, the builders will end up putting into a quick move channel. The price comes down to 320, and the builder is giving back $15,000 for a net price of 305. You're seeing dramatic cuts. The interesting thing is that you know we're going to get to resale market here in a moment. The amount of builder uh, quick move inventory is going to hurt um, any resale competing homeowner in the marketplace because builders are making moves depending on who they are. Um, you know, again, I'm seeing a random straggler where you see certain builders that are not getting on the boat on the boat and basically getting their prices down where they need to be, but they are going to be in trouble. They're going to be piling on quick moves and the deeper their lists get, the more discounts they're going to make. Okay. So the, uh, interesting thing I'd like to point out, and I've reported on this before is the fact that, that wall street is seemingly giving these builders a pass. Lennar, DR Horton, some of these stock prices are absolutely incredibly high against history when you face the fact that these builders are going to be seeing some pain in all likelihood in the year 2023. Now take a look at this. Let's jump into uh, some of the most recent data that we got. National Association of Realtors came out with some information, um, released some recently. Um, prices of existing homes uh, fell 11% from the peak. So peak being June, we're going to talk about that more in a second. Um, sales hit a post lockdown low and then cash buyers and investors pull back very hard. Now, again, um, this is important to look at because um, you know when you're back in the resale market, resale market is struggling. You take a look at this graph, uh, you can see the amount of uh, existing home sales on the amount that we're moving a month over month is just plummeting, okay? So previously owned homes is what we're looking at right now. Again, we, we just kind of talked about the, the plight of the builder, but on the other side of this, even though you see a very, very low uh, amount of people listing their homes, um, it doesn't matter if no one's buying them, the amount of homes that are sitting on the market is going to grow. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing less people picking off homes. The sell-off of homes is absolutely down. You can see this uh, right here, this pandemic spike where it just plummeted. And then again, really kind of going across 2022, it, it just fell and fell and fell. And again, a lot of this um, is kind of like the comment I made a second ago is just you have a lot of sellers out there that are not on the same page with the market. The market is backing away and sellers are still a little bit perplexed thinking that they hold out that some someone magically going to walk through their home and pay their magically overinflated price 
in the face of prices falling. We're gonna get to that in a second. Um, the reality is if you've seen you know, 10, 15% price loss in your area, which is the case in some parts of the country, it's far higher than that already, which by the way, when you look against some of the statistics in the past, that is a big drop in a short amount of time. You know, if sellers are on the same page with that particular change, you know, and you know, you're sitting on a five hundred thousand dollar house and the market's changed ten percent and you haven't made a forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar adjustment to get ahead of that falling market, then the house is gonna sit. Buyers is gonna sit there and look at your house. And um, you know, the other thing too, I talked about this in the past, is that a lot of the fact of the matter is a lot of these real estate agents that are in the market right now just got in over this boom. They really don't know what they're doing. Uh, many of them don't even know how to ask a seller for a price reduction. So that lends itself to being some weird stagnancy when there's just a lack of professionals in the marketplace that can actually help um, move some of this inventory by, you know, by, by advising sellers. But take a look at this. You have sales of previously owned homes, condos fell by 1.5%. Again, that's just a month over month change. But a cumulative change, there's been 11 months in a row of month to month declines that are now 35% year over year. Um, again, to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of sales at 4.02 million homes, roughly matching the lockdown pace. Okay, so the, the the amount of homes that we're trending to sell has gone so far down, it's now on par with what we were selling when the country had everybody locked in place. Um, not good, right? Actual sales in December, not the seasonally adjusted sales. Okay, fell 36.3%. December fell 36.3% over prior year. The median price of all of the homes which closed in November fell for the sixth month in a row to a number, this is national, of 366,900. Okay, folks, that's down 11.3% from the peak in June, okay? Now keep this in mind. The stretch from June to November every year, there's a little bit of a decline seasonally. Okay, so you can't look at 11.3% and be like, oh man, the market is done. It's caving in. It's true. It is falling and it definitely is um, going down. Um, but the you know there is just a bit of a seasonality. Let me, let me read this down here. Only a portion of the June to December price drop is seasonal. The average June to December decline over the six years before the pandemic was 5.8%. Okay, so we had 11.3% loss, but we lose about half of that anyway so if you net that out then there is actually um, an additional five to six percent of price loss over you know what is that five months that um that you have in that particular range of season so there we actually over indexed in how much value is lost i mean above the seasonality um it still shows that there was um definitely some some you know there's some things are softening shape shaping up here so take a look at this. Additional uh, confirmation that much of this decline was not seasonal is provided by the rapidly shrinking year-over-year -year price gain. Okay, so look at this. Last year, you know, we had this run-up in price that went crazy, and then towards the end of the year, sellers paid it back out. And in some markets, it was far worse. Check this out. In San Francisco, the median price has plunged 30 percent from the peak in April. 2022. So April of last year, 30% price. It's unbelievable how volatile that marketplace is. Um, and you, you kind of carry that further. What's going on? Well, check this out. Um, and this has been a factor of what we're kind of considering is the dangerous side of this market is that all cash buyers, investors, second home buyers pull back massively. So you had all sales uh, that were all cash purchases uh, plunged 22% year over year to 92,000 homes, okay? That just makes sense. When you have a marketplace that is unstable, you have a marketplace where buyers don't have confidence and a buyer's putting all their money and every penny into the house, they're not sharing any of the risk with a bank or financial institution, those are the savviest of all buyers, okay? Cash buyers are not gonna take risk. Um, they're gonna be very... They're going to be very careful. Sorry, I thought I heard someone over my shoulder. Um, and they're they're just not going to um, they're not going to jump in. And it, the reality is too, a lot of what pushed our market up over the past two and a half years was cash buyer, investor, and second home involvement. Um, we've seen a lot. You know, I'm in Orlando area. We're very popular for um, some of the Blackstone. We're very popular for some of the Black Rocks, 
some of these massive companies that are buying up houses for residential renting and stuff like that. And those sales have dramatically come down. Um, so when those buyers are pulling out, there's even less uh, you know, traction uh, to get into. So look at this, sales um, to an individual investors or second home purchases plunged by 27%. Um, get this, sales of single family houses fell by 1.1% December from November and 33.5% year over year. So, so single family home year over year is down 33% over a year ago. Check this out. This is this folks you need to be careful of. Um, condos and co-ops fell by 4.5% from one month to the next. So that was a November to December trend and is off by 38.2% um, year over year, okay? Um, one of the things I would tell you folks, it's, it's one thing to be like taking a risk right now and buying a single family home. Um, but, but another thing is condos. You wanna be very, 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 very careful. In a softening market, condos get wrecked. Um, if, if this particular uh, correction in the housing market is anything like last time, condos were in serious trouble. Now, here's why. Let me give you a couple facets to this. Um, condos are usually the most economical, um, I, I shouldn't say dollar per footage, they're not necessarily always the cheapest, but sale price wise, you know, usually you can get a condo much cheaper because it's fractional ownership. Everybody owns a percentage of the ground the building is sitting on, values in the land, not the building mostly. So, um, you know, everybody shares the cost of everything. And, you know, typically you can get a, a little bit better price to live in a given area. So instead of paying $300,000 for a house in a given area, you can get a condo for 150 and that's the most affordable entry point. Well, over the past five years, condos have become increasingly hard to finance. So if you're not um, you know, seeing a lot of cash in your purchase, like you're putting a lot of down payment or maybe even paying for the entire property in cash, um, condos just have less demand because there's fewer people that can, can buy them. Um, we saw, I remember when I was selling REOs and bank owned homes in Vegas, after the last time the market crashed, we were selling condominiums in that marketplace. A typical 2232 condo would go for 215,000 to 275 at the high of the market. Those condos were selling for 30, 40, 50,000 dollars afterwards when the market softened because the demand pool goes so low. In this case, you know, the sequence of those updates where you had um, you know, the cash buyers are pulling out. A lot of that demand is going to affect those people that are needing to sell condos. All of this, folks, too, again, you got to understand the data points here are really coming from the reality that we're going to see economic pressure. We're a week away from the Fed chair coming out, making his next update about what he's going to do with interest rates, which we already know. Um, unless he's been lobotomized or bought off or something else, he's going to come back out and raise rates again. Um, and then, you know, you're already seeing Google just they're they're doing a record lay layoff for their company. They're at a, a record level of people being sent back um, out of the marketplace. You have a lot more turnover in the public, which is the goal of the Fed is to really slow down the expense of everything. And so you know, people that are getting laid off are most likely coming to new jobs that pay them less. Um, you're going to have situations this year that I don't think you had in 2022. So one of the things you have to understand, folks, is the amount of people bringing houses to the market last year was a multi-year low, multiple, multiple low amount of people bringing houses to the market. It was like plus 20% um, less sellers bringing homes to the market um, than, than a typical year. I mean, it's just not there. There was, you know, a lot of realtors saying, well, we don't have inventory. Well, you gotta understand if we had inventory, this story would be really bad, okay? Because that's just how far down demand is. So, you know, as we get to these situations later this year, um, you're gonna have more constraining of things. You're gonna have more people, you know, laying off. Industries are gonna get tighter. I have talked about the real estate market in my area. You know, I believe four years ago, three years ago, there was maybe 13,000 realtors. I think there's now like 23,000 realtors in my marketplace. You're going to have prices coming down, which means commissions are going to drop. You're going to have 
agents, you know, our agents, the, the amount of volume going around per agent is just like record lows. The amount of sales per available agent to sell a house is very, very low. So you're going to have agents that are just going to be, I'm not going to pay the fees. I'm getting out. You're going to have the same thing happen in the mortgage business. They're going to have months go by with no transactions. It's like, why keep up all the education? Why keep paying for the fees to stay in business? And they're going to close their doors. Okay. And again, this isn't just related to the housing industry. This is related to everything that has a customer involved that's now not buying as much or paying as much. You know, it's like, it is what it is. The Fed's got to do it. The cost of eggs is like buying a Rolex now. You know, it's like, I, I saw um, uh, a lender put up a meme that said, hey, if you're afraid your house won't appraise because values are, are getting slow, just egg the house before the appraiser comes over. It'll hit value, no problem. You know, things are expensive. The Fed's got his, you know, their backs against the wall. They have to increase rates. They have to slow the economy down. Um, if a pivot's coming, it isn't coming anytime soon, okay? So that being said, we're going to see some recessionary pressure. I believe there's going to be an inflection a little bit harder uh, from sellers that have to sell, okay? I think there's going to be more of a marketplace. At the same time, there's going to be less buyers to absorb it. Um, the good news lately, I, I would say, that's favorable to things being somewhat more sustained is the fact that the interest rates have been softening. Okay, so the greater trend since December has been a better interest rate for mortgage, still low 6%, mid 6%, depending on what kind of loan you're qualifying for. That's always great. Um, but that's just because the 10 year believes, the 10 year bond believes that the Fed has, has won the battle on inflation and it's all going down. Uh, all that has to be has to be seen. So we'll see what happens. But all that to say, let's continue the conversation in the comments. Let me know what you think is coming for 2023. Let me know which marketplace you wanna talk about, particularly state. I wanna do some state updates where I'm doing a deep dive by the state. If you guys like to see more of that, let me know in the comments what state you'd like me to talk about. We'll see you on the next video. Talk to you real soon.